So multi-apping, you know what that is, right? Driving on different apps at the same time and selecting the best order for you. Well, I have a multi-apping shift here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania with my twin brother, Matt. Check his channel linked down below in the description. And we had what I think might be one of the worst orders I've ever seen. Welcome to the channel, my name is Mike. On this channel, I help you with the gig economy, your side hustle, your full-time hustle, making money and creating multiple revenue streams. So if you are new here, consider subscribing. And for your A to Z course on mastering these food delivery platforms, understanding the basics and how to make the most money, check out my course, Mastering Delivery, that also linked down below. So you should just generally be multi-apping, again, driving on different apps so you can compare if one's slow, maybe one's busier. Maybe one is busier, but they're not offering any bonus pay versus the other ones that are. Multi-apping, in my opinion, it's one of the best ways to boost your earnings really on most every niche in this gig economy. So going online here, we can see with DoorDash, with Uber Eats, and with Grubhub, which is actually our first order here, Slice on Broadway. Now, check it out, it's not even that far. So it's $10.46. That's a big trade-off with Grubhub that, yeah, it's a good payout. It's 10 plus dollars, which is really the ideal on these food delivery apps. And yeah, it doesn't look like it's gonna take that long. It doesn't look that far, but of course, we can't see the actual miles on Grubhub. So let's say you're driving on any of these food delivery apps, right? And let's just look at that order again and look at the top left screen here Pay attention to the time. So it's 6.30 p.m. when I get this order request. So we get there, we park, and one of the biggest, the worst delays that you can have on a food delivery apps happened right now because basically start the stopwatch for the wait time. So your time is money. So obviously the longer that you're waiting, you wanna just pick it up, make that delivery. You wanna finish the delivery so you can get another order request so you can keep making money. So obviously a long wait time really eats into that. So one tip I will give you when it comes to waiting. So let's say you're staging, you're waiting in a power strip. That's areas that are dense with restaurants, which is what you should be doing. So if you get an order request, let's say that's literally right around the corner, it's within walking distance, just be mindful of that because the way that these apps work here is there's a lot of timing, a lot of algorithms that go into play here. But sometimes if you just get that ping, that request, so did the restaurant. Now the irony here of getting an order and waiting at this slice on Broadway is we actually got another order, a stacked order here for 637. Now we've already been waiting what, like 15 minutes here, so there's no way that we're gonna risk waiting even more, so easy decline. So again, as mentioned recently, one of the biggest delays is, yeah, wait time at restaurants. So when we see this, this order from five guys, you may be thinking, well, there is another long wait. It's $11.83 and Five Guys, really one of the places that starts to prepare it once you arrive here, but accepted. So we accepted that for twofold. And let me know down below in the comments if you agree with this first point. But what we've been seeing here in Pittsburgh is some of these apps are getting better with that timing that I just mentioned here, with the algorithms of saying, okay, the driver's gonna arrive and at that time, the restaurant should be ready. Now, regardless, the way that Five Guys does this is, yeah, it doesn't matter which app, they're gonna start preparing or really assembling that order when you arrive. But I guess it really was the latter here. It was already prepared technically, it's cooked right. So they just had to assemble it. So actually, wasn't that long of a wait. Now, I'm not sure if you saw really the ending destination of that last order request, but positioning is so important. We declined a good amount of orders on this shift that you didn't see here so far because the positioning didn't make sense. It was carrying us way across the map. It was carrying us north, south, really away from and outside of those power strips. For me at least, declined. And we can literally see that denoted here now online with DoorDash, with DoorDash indicating this is a power strip or a hot zone as well. And check this out, I wanted to show you this as well. So in the recent video talking about delays, one of those was weather delays. 
and we had a very bad thunderstorm here. It rolled through pretty quickly, but it was pretty bad. So check this out. Finishing that last delivery into Squirrel Hill, really one of the worst hit areas here in Pittsburgh. Check this out. Tree across an entire stretch of road. So now it's time to go over one of the worst orders that I've seen, that Matt's seen over thousands of deliveries on really all of these food delivery apps because several things went wrong on this one order. Well, should I say one order request that was actually a stacked order for two orders. So both from Howley Chinese Food for $17, 4.1 miles. So this is one of the places that does a lot of takeout orders here in Pittsburgh. So what I would tell you is if you have a restaurant, if you have an order request that pops up and you know it's one of those popular takeout places, kind of look at the day of the week maybe, especially the time, and yeah, use your judgment. Because we get there and there's probably four or five other drivers waiting, not a good sign, and again, we're waiting for two orders. So you put the name in and then they tell you those orders just came in. Here's a pro tip for you. As soon as they tell you that those orders just came in and you see like four or five other drivers, at that point, you need to make the decision. I would say, okay, I'm gonna wait. It's honestly, it's gonna be at least 15 minutes. I wouldn't even say, you know, 10 minutes. Probably gonna be at least 15 minutes or should I cancel and I'll take the hit on the cancellation rate and then just move on. But then also there's considerations of, okay, how good is my day going, my week, my month, et cetera, as far as your earnings goals? Are you doing pretty well? Can you afford to wait? Or has the shift that day been really slow and you've been getting a lot of $4 orders and this one is a really a standout order? Those are some big trade-offs and the cash flow, the $17 for this stacked order, plus the positioning, it looked pretty good. So we were waiting probably 25 minutes and if it was 30 minutes, I don't even know, I wasn't timing it, but if someone told me it was 30 minutes, I'd probably believe them because we were waiting there like forever. It was a pain. Again, you might just want to cancel here, but already made the decision, already sat in, wasn't really worried about the wait time. So we make the pickup and let's just make the easy delivery and get out of there. So first delivery, super easy, awesome. Moving on to the second delivery, which was anything but easy, which really compounded the issues on this one order request. So let me explain what happened on this one. So second delivery in Lawrenceville, I believe it was a boys and girls club. Now there's several ways you can actually confirm, okay, if it's a business, right? If it's like another restaurant even, I've had that. If it's a retail and you're thinking, okay, this seems like kind of an odd delivery destination. There's several things you can do to double check. So on the Dasher app, it'll show you a pin of the actual facility, the building, that's the one you need to deliver to. Number two, you can always verify with Google Street Maps. I like doing that. I pull up Google Maps, you punch in the address, and then it'll show you a street view of that building, that house, complex, whatever, etc. So yeah, that was the one. It was a correct location. And the cherry on top was this was a meet at door, which means, of course, I can't just leave it there. This wasn't a contactless delivery. So I had to find the customer. So no customer found, we're waiting here. So that starts this. You click on, you can't hand the order to the customer and you must go through these steps. Step number one, there's a counter that you have to wait for entirely before you can even move on. Okay, well, it says contact customer. So call the customer and or text the customer. Did both, the number was not a good number on either one. So yeah, what's supposed to be a handoff to the customer and you can't even reach the customer, there's no one even standing outside of the building. And frankly, it doesn't even look like there's many people, if anyone, inside the building. So that means your only option is of course to wait out this timer, which keeps on ticking. And remember, we already had that extremely long wait before this, so even more wait time. After that, thankfully, you can move on. You can leave the food at a front door, a main door, right? And you take a photo. I would take especially more of the surroundings here to really confirm it was delivered here. And then adding a description, I would be plenty detailed, which I was here, of where I left this delivery. 
So yeah, a 30 minute wait at the restaurant followed by even more waiting. And it's like you in the road, right? We got things to do, Matt's gotta get home, I gotta get home. So that's how this wonderful shift ended here. So now it's time to look at the numbers. So an evening shift here in Pittsburgh from 6.30 p.m. until 8.30 p.m. Total gross revenue on Grubhub was $22.29 and $20 on DoorDash, which equals a grand total of $42.29. Decently happy here with the gross revenue per hour. We earned $21.15. And again, with the wait at the pizza place and this long wait on that final delivery, makes sense that we couldn't squeeze in more orders here. Well, speaking of completed four deliveries, did receive four tips as well with an average tip of $6.11. Now, one shining point in this shift, I would say, were the business miles. So not a lot of driving here, which is good. You wanna, of course, save your vehicle, save the wear and tear if possible. So just 9.5 business miles, which equals a payout per mile, exceptional at $4.45. And that earns a tax deduction of $5.32. So if you got value in this video, definitely drop me a like, and you can also click or tap screen here for my newest video, as well as a video recommended for you. And I'll see you in the next one.